guys, let's come up with a company that might be selling goods. We'll meet the management team to be aware of its organizational structure. First, we will get its starting financial position by taking into account all the assets and liabilities. Then, we will simulate its all possible business operations for a period, let's say a half of a year. Then, step by step, we'll prepare the income and cash flow statements. So, we will define the net profit and cash flow. And finally, we'll prepare the ending balance sheet and verify the profit with a net worth increase. So, in this model, guys, we'll focus on how to prepare these financial statements. We are not going to be bothered too much on how to read them because it's important point we address in the following modules. Now, here's our beautiful company named fun cases. So, sounds pretty much like the wholesale nice covers for phones. Let me introduce our head of sales and marketing. I'm the supply and logistics head. And here is my stereotype for a chief financial officer who is directly responsible for all administration and finance activities. Let's fix the started financial position and prepare our beginning balance sheet. First, our financial responsible center leaders will accept the beginning assets and liabilities to get the company's net worth as a starting point. Let's present all the company numbers in rounding thousands of dollars for the simplicity's sake. I confirm that our entering cash is 10,000. Accounts receivable is 100k. Confirmed. Our revised inventory is 200 on the purchase price. We consider the equipment residual value to be 80k. It should not be forgotten about our liabilities. The accounts payable amounts to 100k. So we keep them just at the level of our client's debts. The accrued expenses to be paid is 10k. We have no liabilities from equipment purchase left but our loan debts balance is 90,000. Finally, we come up with the company's starting net worth or equity. And we do that by adding all the assets minus all the liabilities, so it equals 190K. Now guys, imagine that six months have passed quickly and our like-minded and like-faced management team have been working tirelessly. Now let's go back to them and ask them about all the kind of business transactions they conducted over this period. We sold goods for $500 on credit and received $480 in cash. I know, the rest is still in accounts receivable and we will collect it later. My marketing expenses were $20K, all paid in time. I guess here no liabilities left. We acquired goods for sale for 400. They arrived at the warehouse, but cost of goods sold was 350. That means that our inventory should increase by 50k or so. While we bought goods for 400, we paid our suppliers just 320. Looks like we owe them now even more. My logistic expenses were 50k accrued and only 40 paid. So we accumulated our expenses debts. And I have a good news that we finally bought the long awaited new equipment for 100k and it was fully paid. And I did some rough estimation and it seems like our all equipment depreciation should be just 10k for this time. So we've managed to increase our net equipment investments drastically. Our administrative expenses were 30k accrued and paid. We are okay with that. We faced some shortage of cash for that equipment, so we borrowed from the bank. We had 80k borrowed and we've managed to pay off 20k of this debt. All the interest accrued of 5k were completely paid. Our taxes expenses were 10k accrued and paid. The owners gave us nothing. They did 10k as I say, advanced dividends. Now, guys, you can see all this bunch of activities that this company was involved in. It is so important for every top management not to get lost in this mess, but to sort it out into financial statements so all investors and management can clearly see how the profit and cash flow funnel works. Now, let's move a little bit all these operations and focus on the income and cash flow statements for this period. We are going to prepare this income and cash 
item by item in parallel, so you can feel the main differences between these two statements. First, in the income statement revenue, we reflect the sales on accrual basis, so invoice-based sales of 500 goes directly to the income statement. The cash received from clients of 480k goes directly to the cash flow statement. To get a gross profit in the income statement, we have 350 as cost of goods sold, but not all goods we bought and haven't sold it yet. 320 in cash paid to suppliers goes directly to the cash flow statement. So the cost of goods sold subtracted from sales give us 150k as a gross profit. Not bad. Proceeds from clients minus payments to suppliers give us 160 as a gross cash flow. Let's talk about operating expenses our heads. We reflect only accrued expenses in the income statement, so we have 20k on marketing accrued. If all these expenses been paid, that goes to the cash flow statement. The logistic expenses accrued is 50k, logistic expenses paid just 40. 30k for administration accrued goes to the income. 30k paid we transfer to the cash. So we have 100k as a total operating overheads in the income statement. These expenses subtracted from the gross profit of 150 give us the operating profit of 50k. The total operating expenses paid were 90k. These payments subtracted from the gross cash, so we've generated the operating cash of 70k. Please note that the net profit was just 50, so that means that this 20k of extra cash came just from the debts increase. 10k of depreciation goes to the income statement as the lost value of capital. But 100k of cash spent on equipment we reflect in the cash flow statements for sure. The loan interest accrued of 5k goes to the income statement. The interest paid we transfer to the cash. Remember, we don't account the net borrowings as profits. So the net increase in the loan borrowings of 60k we reflect only in the cash flow statement. That's because we received from the bank 80k and paid off just 20. 10k of taxes accrued, the income statement. 10k taxes paid, the cash flow. So we got the net profit earned of 25k as the operating profit minus depreciation and interest. But our net cash flow got in a similar way is just 15. This net cash of 15k compared with the net profit of 25 means that the difference of 10k of profit we invested in the equipment buying out. The net profit distribution. 10k of accrued dividends. 10k of cash paid to owners. We can see from the income statement that retained profit in the company's net worth remained as 15,000. At the same time, we have 5k as retained cash flow for this period. This retained cash flow means that the company's cash amount in the balance sheet increased by just 5k. Guys, we just prepared the income and cash flow statements. How can we make sure that we defined our financial result perfectly well? Nice question, and it brings us directly to the final management balance sheet. At first, let's transfer all the data from the beginning balance sheet we came up with our team. Remember guys, we had the net worth of 190k as a starting point. Let's come up with the net changes for each balance sheet item to get the present financial position and check the difference in a company's equity. Let's transfer our retained cash increase of 5k from the cash flow statement. Given that the beginning amount of cash of 10k is still remain at the bank, now we should have 15k in our bank accounts in total. Checking that without real balance at the bank sounds quite reasonable in practice. So we just assume that our financial chief officer has not stolen anything so far. Folks, seriously, our accounts receivable increased by 20k because of the difference between 500k goods sold on credit and 480 of cash received. So we had 100k at the beginning plus 500k minus 480, that gives us 120 we have presently. 
I know for sure that our stock increase is 50k. That is because we had 400k of goods arrived at the warehouse and cost of goods sold was written off of 350. So the beginning value was 200k plus 400 minus 350 gives us 250 as our ending inventory. We've managed to increase our net equipment investments by 90k. We've bought a new one for 100 and depreciated it in total of 10k. So the beginning value was 80k plus 100 minus 10 give us 170 as the ending equipment value. The account payable increased also by 80k. The beginning value was 100 plus 400 we bought, less 320 we paid. At the end of the period we have 180k in this debt. The accrued expenses is up by 10k, I remember because our logistics underpaid. So we had 10 plus accrued 50 minus 40 paid, now we have 20 in our balance sheet. The new equipment was fully paid. We increased the net loan by 60k. Our loan was 90k plus 80 minus 20 paid off, now we have 150 in this debt. And that is correct. Now we see that the company's net worth is 205. We obtain that by subtracting the ending liabilities from the assets we have. Now let's see the net worth increase the company gained for these six months. We had 190, but now 205. So the company gained its equity value by 15. Okay. This 15 case feels familiar, doesn't it? I must have seen this 15 somewhere. Get it? That's exactly our income statement retained profit is. Such a coincidence. Now guys, we've completed the whole process of preparing the financial statements for management, from the starting point to the ending management balance sheet. But the main question is not how to prepare but how to plan and manage the financial result. So guys, we have something important to do in our next coming models, right? Oh, just a moment. It would be just great if we had something like mm, the spreadsheet model for financial statements with all these tricky links uh, automatically. We can play with data in case we forget anything. Nice one. If it sounds reasonable for you guys, I mean to have the Google Sheet financial model for this case, where you can play with numbers to consolidate your knowledge about these statements. In this video description, please find the link and fill out the form and I will send it to you as quickly as I receive it. Thank you guys so so much for learning with me and please let me know in case if it was interesting and useful for you. See you. Thank you.